Greetings, everyone. I'm Scott Rodell here at the Great River Taoist Center, home to the Academy of Chinese Swordsmanship. Today, I'm going to start a new series. People for some time have been asking me to review cutting swords. And so this is the first in the series, and I'm going to be reviewing this very nice Gale Wind Ming Style Gen by L.K. Chen. Now, the first thing you may ask is, why a cutting sword? And it's quite simply because a cutting sword is a real sword. Now, I know some people are going to say, why do I need a real sword? I, you know, I don't do a lot of cutting practice, or maybe I don't do any cutting practice. What does it matter? Well, you could have a sword that is historically accurate in its fittings, in its details, that is properly balanced. It may seem fine for form practice, but that's really a sword like object, not a sword. And the problem with that is, and I've seen this happen, if the blade is not made of good steel, steel the, like a cutting sword is, then that's a soft steel and in use, in vigorous form practice, practicing your basic cuts and so on, you're stressing that blade. A lot of stress goes into the blade, a lot of vibration, and in time, it can break. And you don't know when it's going to break or where that blade is going to go, where it's going to fly when it breaks. So if you're serious about your practice, invest in a good sword, get yourself a cutting sword whether or not you're cutting at the time you're buying your sword. Let's take a look at the specs for this gem. It has a fairly heavy blade, a little over a kilo at 1,010 grams, which is two pounds, four ounces almost. So it's a really heavy blade, definitely on the heavier end of the historical spectrum. It also has a particularly long blade, 78 centimeters, which is nearly 30 and three quarter inches. And that's about pretty much as long as they ever were. 32 inch blades were really, really quite rare. Even, even blades of this length were fairly rare during the Ming and Qing periods, but definitely within historical norm. Fortunately, they've got the point of balance correct, so it doesn't feel heavy. That's, that's really good. That means they've done their homework. A sword should be balanced so that it's lively in the hand, that it can move quickly and easily, but also deliver a good, solid, robust cut. To forge a sword that does one or the other, that's either lively or can deliver a very powerful cut, that's easy. To get the point of balance correct, so that it is both lively and can cut well, that takes doing your homework. They have definitely done that here. Looking at the quality of the blade, it's really nicely polished. Remember, this is a sword that's selling in the $300 price range. That is really an inexpensive sword these days. And this blade has, I would say, a better than average finish for swords in this price range. Now, that's not necessarily an important feature. If you have a sword that's not as nicely finished, is not polished as finely as this one is, that's not gonna affect its use, not gonna affect how well you can train with it, barely is gonna affect the cutting efficiency, slightly more efficient in the cut. When, the, when it's a finer polish, the edges are a little bit slicker. It'll cut a little more efficiently. You might not even notice that, but again, this is a sword in that $300 price range. It's a really nice finish for that quality. So uh, not, I would say that's a plus that this has such a nicely finished blade. As far as the fittings and the scabbard goes, they're not quite as nicely done as the blade is. Now again, this is a sword in the $300 price range. What I always say to students is, if you're buying a Subaru, don't complain that you didn't get a Ferrari. So overall, the fittings are nice, they're historically accurate, it has this linger style, this, the fungus of immortality style guard that was popular during some times during the Ming period. The scabbard suspension band is a type that was used during the Qing Dynasty later, so that's not quite 100% historically accurate, but I think for most people that's really probably not that important at all. The one thing is that some of the edges are a little bit rough, not really perfectly finished, nothing that's a real problem, and nothing that you couldn't clean up yourself with a block of wood and some 300 grit sandpaper. So, not, and no, in no way a deal breaker, and something that you can tweak and take care of yourself if you like. The scabbard, likewise, there's a couple little places where the grain is open. It's nothing that's going to really affect the sword. If you want it a little bit nicer finish, 
You can always do that yourself with a, a good quality spray lacquer, tape over the fittings. You can make that nice and shiny and bright if you like. But in no way, again, that is not a criticism. That's just advice on how you could make it a little better if you like. The one thing, though, that I would like to see LK Chen pay a little bit more attention to on the quality control is that the scabbard suspension band here, you can see, slides fairly easily. So it's not 100% tight. That's a little bit more of a concern because that's not something you can easily fix yourself if it gets looser. So just need a little more attention to quality control before they send them out. But I would not call that a deal breaker in any way. So overall, quality and fit and finish, I would definitely say that's a yes. Most modern made swords today, especially in this kind of price range, have a bolt instead of a peened tang. And some people don't like that. I understand cosmetically it's not as nice. Obviously it's not traditional, but it's actually a really good detail. This which may sound funny. I'm a real traditionalist. Why would I be happy about this bolt? For the simple reason that when you're practicing with any sword, as you're doing your fudging work, really practicing your cuts, there's a lot of shock that travels up and down the blade in all swords. Everybody's swords, regardless of the forge, will come loose. The hilts will eventually get loose. There's a lot of shock traveling up and down the blade. And when that happens, you can get out a vice grip or a wrench, tighten this up, and you're as good as new. So this is a modern feature that I actually think is a plus. I'm not criticizing that, I'm saying that's critiquing that as being a good thing to have. The other thing that I like about LK Chen swords is, and many people have this, this hole that goes through the grip that you can run a lanyard through. The difference is that they have provided you with this lanyard, and I think that's a really good feature. You slip your hand through this. This is a historical feature, and that's really useful when you're practicing your cutting. So when you go and deliver your cut, if you were to lose a sword, it's not going to fly away from you. It's just going to get cut. So it might bang into your leg, but that's a lot safer, especially if you're cutting with other people around you. So I think that's a, a nice little plus, and I'm glad that they added that on. The other nice thing that LK Chen has done is included this sword bag. Now, of course, most of the time you're probably not going to keep your sword in a, or travel around with it in such a nice sword bag, but it's a really nice extra that most people don't include with their swords these days, especially for one at this price point. So that's a great little feature. Now, I know one thing everybody's wondering is how sharp is it? Is it really sharp? Let's have a look. I'd say it's quite sharp. In fact, it is sharper than most swords probably were in period. So that's not a negative at all. In some ways, that's a positive. It's sharper than you need it to be for test cutting. It's sharper than, of course, you would need it to be for form work. How that is helpful to the practitioner is if you're just beginning to do test cutting work and you have an edge like this that's pretty sharp, sharp but not quite razor sharp, but getting close to it, if your edge angle is a little bit off as you're contacting a target, especially a harder target, something like, say, bamboo, that little bit extra sharpness will help to bite in and help to line up your cut. If you're just a bit off, if you're way off, it'll still bounce off the target. But when you're first starting off, that little bit extra sharpness is really useful. Also, it means that over time, if you're doing a lot of cutting work, you're a lot less likely to need to have to repolish your sword and sharpen it again. So, now comes the real test. Does it cut well? Let's go out to the garden and have a look and see. Well, that went quite well. I really enjoyed cutting with this sword today. So I can definitely say that if you are looking for a historically accurate Ming style gen, I definitely recommend this LK Chen Gale Wind Gen. If you found this review interesting and useful, please do share it. And as always, we appreciate subscriptions. Don't forget to hit that bell so you hear about the next video and a thumbs up if you think we earned it. Until next time, thanks and Zai Jen!